First at Four, the coach of the Detroit Lions deals head on with reports of a decades old claim of sexual assault. I'm here to defend my honor and clear my name. You'll hear the coach's defense, Ben. Karen, those midday showers have left us, but it is going to get downright cold tonight. We'll look at those numbers straight ahead. Paula? Hi, Ben. You know, we cover a lot of job fairs, but this one was specifically geared towards older people, and we have a surprise for one of the applicants. I hope they're watching. These stories and more happening right now on Local 4 First at 4. Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News First at 4 starts now. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Karen Drew. First at four, Lions coach Matt Patricia faces reporters looking to clear his name. He's speaking out after a decades old sex assault claim that was made public. Patricia says he did nothing wrong. I find it unfair and upsetting that someone would bring this claim up over two decades later. Now here's what he is talking about. The Detroit News reported last night that Patricia was indicted on a charge of aggravated sexual assault back in 1996. The paper cites court records showing the victim claimed it happened at a hotel during spring break. Patricia was never tried and the charges were dropped. Today, the Lions coach says he did nothing wrong and he now wishes he could have proven his innocence all those years ago. 22 years ago, I was falsely accused of something very serious, very serious allegations. There were claims made about me that never happened. While I'm thankful on one level that the process worked and the case was dismissed, at the same time, I was never given the opportunity to defend myself or to allow to push back with the truth to clear my name. The Lions have released a statement saying they believe Patricia's account of the incident and will continue to support him. The NFL says it will review the matter. The father of a three-year-old boy who shot himself on Tuesday appeared in court today. 34-year-old Melvin Cooley Klein III faces several charges after police say his son shot himself in the stomach. Prosecutors say the child found his father's loaded gun inside a house on Detroit's east side. Prosecutors say Klein has multiple prior felony convictions, including home invasion. The boy remains in critical condition at Children's Hospital. Now, many of you are following this search at clickondetroit.com as investigators are digging in Macomb Township for a fourth day. Sky 4 is live over the search site, which covers about 24 acres near 23 Mile and North Avenue. Several agencies are searching right now for the remains of up to six young girls linked to convicted killer Arthur Ream. No major breaks today, but Local Force Coco McAvoy has been talking with relatives who are going through an agonizing wait. It's day four of digging here in Macomb Township. The FBI, Macomb County Sheriff's Department, and the Warren Police Department are all out here looking for clues in a number of cold cases. And of course, this is reopening a lot of wounds for a number of family members. And we're hearing from one family member for the first time. He's the brother of Kim Laro. You can never give up hope. You'll hear more from him tonight and why he believes more should have been done in his sister's case when she went missing in the 80s. Hey Coco, thank you. A crash on Westbound I-94 just after West Grand Boulevard in Detroit caused some major backups this morning. A semi truck hit the Warren overpass and split in half. Look at this video. It caused two lanes to close. Now you are seeing the scene from Sky 4 over that accident. After the semi truck was cleared, crews stayed on the scene to make sure that that bridge was safe. Now, luckily, no injuries were reported. All lanes have since been reopened. They say all good things must come to an end, and that certainly is true in this first forecast. Ben. We're about to see a big swing in temperatures. We are, and you could almost sort of feel it today. There was that little transition. We had the clouds, some muted temperatures, and those midday showers, and we really only got 70 degrees. That's where we stand right now. Metro, Ann Arbor at the same number, and we're seeing the upper 60s here in Port Huron and Monroe. But it is going to get downright cold tonight, especially in parts of our north and west zone. We'll be down to the mid 50s by midnight tonight, and we're going to continue dropping. And once we get to those chilly temperatures, it looks like we may stay there for a while. We'll look at that forecast and talk some rain for the weekend. Multiple chances coming up in a few minutes, Karen. 
All right, thank you, Ben. It has been a whirlwind week of diplomacy between the United States and North Korea. And today we have a date and a location for a meeting between President Donald Trump and Kim Jong Un. The president tweeting today the highly anticipated meeting between Kim Jong Un and myself will take place in Singapore on June 12th. That big reveal follows the overnight arrival of three Americans held prisoner in North Korea. Devin Skillian following the very latest and Devin, the president is getting some criticism. Uh, he is indeed, Karen, a top Democrat, questioning whether President Trump is being a little too grateful uh, to Kim Jong-un for the release of the Americans who had been held uh, for up to two years. The detainees landed at Joint Base Andrews in the early morning hours after that long flight from uh, Korea. President Trump and the First Lady were there in the middle of the night to greet them. The men were sent to Walter Reed Medical Center so that they could be evaluated, and that's where they were privately reunited with their families. Democratic Senator Chuck Schumer says it's right to celebrate their release, but he cautions against giving Kim Jong-un too much credit. The president has been kinder and gentler to the dictator in recent weeks, of course, certainly compared to when he was calling him Little Rocket Man. Here, here. I want to thank Kim Jong-un, who really uh, was excellent to these three incredible people. They are really three incredible people. We can't be fooled into giving the North Korean regime credit for returning Americans that never should have be been detained in the first place. As you can imagine, it's a pretty delicate dance as President Trump wants something now from Kim Jong-un, but you have to remember he is a dictator accused of uh, many, many blatant human rights abuses. The president wants North Korea to give up its nuclear weapons program, which of course is the ultimate goal of the summit, which is coming up. Much more coming up on uh, in the ne these next four weeks as we get closer and closer to that meeting again, now set for Singapore in June. Karen, back to you. All right. Thank you very much, Devin. Mm -hmm. We'll see you fine. You bet. Well, we have covered a lot of job fairs over the years, but today we found an event that isn't your typical job fair. That is because the AARP did some matchmaking for older job seekers. Our Paula Tupman was there as some employees found they just made the perfect match. And she looks at what the over 50 crowd brings to the table. A lot of people probably think that when they come to a job fair, then they're just kind of coming here, they're dropping off resumes. And they're really not going to necessarily walk out with a job. That has not been the case here. These employers are looking for a very specific employee candidate. In this job fair, over the hill is not a phrase they're driving. The event at the Northwest Activity Center in Detroit today was geared towards older workers who are being coveted. It's promising tech, so I think it's really like a good opportunity. Organized by AARP, SEMCA, and Detroit Employment Solutions Corporation, this wasn't about chit chat. This was about finding jobs for people who want them. The number one issue when you survey employers is finding talent. But if I'm a worker, an older worker, and I have, was an engineer, or I may have been a teacher, and I have a skill set, I am much more trainable right now in terms of getting back into that workplace. Teresa was laid off in January, and it didn't feel good having to go back out into the workforce and look for a job. I've been looking for companies that would like to hire someone. And to be honest with you, I think if you're over 50 or over 55, it's very difficult to find a job. And I, that's what I've been running into. But she walked into the job fair, sat down, handed her resume over, and within 10 minutes, her head started to spin. I am sending over Teresa Leary as well. Oh, it is very exciting, yes. I mean, to happen this quickly, absolutely. Tracy Sakula, Director of Safety and Recruiting of Express Transportation and Logistics in Romulus, was on a winning streak. She'd already offered three people jobs on the spot. I hired two drivers. One is in transit for a drug screen, and one is already drug screening as we speak. When she saw Teresa's resume, she knew of another company looking for people just like her. They're more educated, they're easier to deal with, um, they've been in the field a little longer, they know the industry. Within two hours, Teresa was walking into emergency restoration, a resume in her hand, hope in her heart, a sturdy handshake, and getting ready for a second promising interview of the day with owner John David. Okay, so does she have the right stuff? John David, one of the owners of Emergency Restoration is with me. How did Teresa do? Teresa did a very good job. I look forward to calling her. I had my brother look at the resume and look calling her next week for a second interview. You said she asked great questions, had good suggestions. She was ready for it. 
I think so. I think she did a good job. I'm looking forward to meeting her again next week. So she's coming back for another interview. And, and so listen, you talk about results. We're talking about an unemployment rate of 3.9%. You can see the sign back here. It says uh, now hiring. People are looking for workers and they're looking for workers with experience. Teresa, I hope you're watching. Congratulations. You get a call back. I would say those are great results for that particular job fair. Oh, Paula, I so agree. And finding out you get that second interview on live TV, oh, that's even better. Right? I like when it. When does that happen? Oh, I wish her <laughs> luck. Thank you so much, Paula. We appreciate it. Well, still ahead, first at four, no one likes market telemarketing calls. Well, now thousands of customers are in line for some really big payments, and we will show you how you might be able to get paid as well. Also ahead, this wedding almost didn't happen. We'll tell you what this bride and groom survived and how they showed love really does conquer all. Up first, how a truck driver helped end this police chase with a bang. We'll be right back.